Hi, this is Sebastian from the Metal Meltdown, and I'm honoured to be joined by... Uh, me, John Rano Edwards from Status Quo, and Rano's Revenge, and in fact, it's a pleasure to meet me. <laughs> Excellent, it certainly is. <laughs> so, are you ready for your tour and album release? Oh. Um, I've, just got the mar- I've just got the masters of my album today, and uh, that's going hot foot off to the um, processing, the pressing plant to be ready for our first gig at the 100 Club on the 6th of March. The 100 Club, 6th of March... Um, we're a little bit under-rehearsed at the moment because my son, Max the drummer, uh, is at university in Berlin, so he's coming back at the weekend and we're going to be uh, rehearsing during next week when we're not out of people's... It's the hectic social calendar at this time of year. There seems to be a lot of weddings going on. A lot of my friends are getting married for the second or third time. and this, So um, it's going to be quite a, quite a hard work, but um, we'll get there, I've no doubt. I see you shared a couple of tracks on the album already, which are really stonking. Um, would there be more to follow over the days, do you think? Mm. Yeah, I think we were talking today. We'll probably put a couple of, a couple of other tracks. I mean, it's, there's, um, there's quite a lot of variety on there. You know, there's a few, uh, quite, a lot of different, quite a few different parts of the rock genre, if you will, up there. Yes, we will be putting more stuff on, I'm pretty sure, in the next couple of days. It's, but it's very diverse, so we've got to decide what kind of music, if you will, we're going to put on. Because the thing that joins it together really is the fact that it's very guitar based and it's the same people playing it and we, you know, so we've developed quite, quite our own sound. But there's, there's a bit of rap up there, there's a bit of metal, there's a bit of pop, there's a bit of very, there's a couple of very crow-like songs, there's some hard rock uh, on a range of subject matters as well. But they're all about something, uh. even if it's from, um, from bondage to dogs. <laughs> Bondage with dogs, eh? Hmm. Yeah. No, 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 no that's a bit without a hint of irony. I, I wrote a song about my dog. Hey, anyone, anyone who's, anyone who's ever had a dog will really get what I mean by it. It's really good. It's a, it's a very, it's a fun song about Stan the Man, my dog. Our dog was Stan. He's a right little fucker. But he was lovely. But he, he was lovely, except he hated me. Uh, but he loved everyone else, so, you know. But I, 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 loved, I liked him, you know. It was a, it was a one-way street on the love front. <laughs> right. But he passed on, and I, so I, I wrote, I wrote I, what I consider to be a fitting tribute to him. So, yeah, I think, we, I think we'll probably put that one up next. You should have, like, a little picture of him on the album as well somewhere. Of course. Yeah. Of course, I'm, you know, I'm just as sloppy as the next one. In fact, it's even sloppier because my, my daughter's on the album as well, my daughter May. Right. And uh, the picture is of May and Stanley. Oh, but, you know, it's a, you know, it's a family affair. Yeah, so was, that was my next question, actually, because it must make you really, really proud to have your two sons in the band and also your daughter as well. Yeah, well, I mean, May's going to come uh, dip in and out when she can. She's, um, I think she's going to do our London show, and then she's at university in Manchester, so she'll do some of the northern ones. Um, but, oh, yeah, you know, it was... Not, not many people will have... Um, not many people will get the chance to have an experience like that, you know. It was just amazing. Absolutely, it sounds... We, you know, we went, we went off to, to uh, the chapel in Lincolnshire to record it, and uh, basically, yeah, it was m- myself, my two sons, my best mate was, is the producer, so it, it was a... Well, not a love-in, that's not the right word, but yeah, it, was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a warmth in. Right. You know, good, good vibe, really was, and, um, you know, when the engineer said to me, I never thought that I would ask, hear a drummer asking the bass player, was that Phil any good, Dad? <laughs> But, um, he loved it, you know, he, he, everyone had it. It was a really good time. We did it in 11 days, which is really quite fast for a record nowadays. And uh, Mike Paxman's been slaving away at it since, and like I said, it's finished today. I got, I got, I got an email saying, ladies and gentlemen, this is Rhino's Revenge. Stick with me, kid. 
So two of them are at uni. What about the third one? Is he at uni as well? My son Max, the drummer's at university. He's at university in Berlin. My daughter May's at university in Manchester. And my son Freddie is uh, a guitar player. He's, he, that's what he does for a living. And he's he's actually the extra guitar player in Status Quo. We do the acoustic stuff. You know, he jumps for the boys and all that. But he, I mean, he also played with us when Rick, when Rick couldn't make a gig, and we decided not to cancel it. Uh-huh. So he was, you know. T- Tonight I'm going to be, you know, and he, he was Rick, and he just did brilliantly. Did he have a wig on? <laughs> <laughs> he's got blonde hair anyway, but he had, the only trouble is he's about a foot taller, so, he, you know, he couldn't play kneeling down. <laughs> but no, he did amazing, he really did. Well, I just hope you all get on okay, which I'm sure you will. So- well, on tour, oh, well, you know, you never can tell, but I mean, it's, um, yeah, we've got, we've got a little bus, so um, we'll, we'll be spending a lot of time in each other's pockets. Yeah, we've, you know, there's a family, we're pretty close, you know, there's not, there's not been, the, there wasn't the, um, the teenage torment years. You haven't had the angst. You know. <laughs> no, they, they didn't, no, you know, they didn't hate, you know, they didn't hate their mum and dad and stuff. Well, not that, not that they told us. So would you know, be... I mean, it's, it's possible, but I don't think. Sounds like a proper family unit. Are you going to be filming any of the shows for a possible DVD release, do you think? Yep. We are, but I don't, um, yes, it, we're going to be filming one of the shows. I don't know if it's been announced yet, but uh, it will be. If it's not, there's another show going on, uh, going on out on sale very shortly that we're going to be that we're going to be filming, which will be an add-on to the end of the tour. And uh, yeah, that's all. Uh, that's all moving on the pace. And um, no, that's that's yeah, that's the UK tour. I think it's well. Where 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 are you based? I'm up by Sunderland. Oh well, well we're playing near you. I think you're playing that's Stockton. Right. Yeah, you're playing Stockton. Stockton. That's right. Yeah.
joining in 86, it was a bit of a square peg in a round hole. I had that conversation with someone earlier today, but I, I felt that the old, you know, even, especially as well with hindsight, because I hadn't really followed the band's career for a, couple, for a few years. Mm-hmm. I actually saw them in 1970 first, I think, that's the first time I saw them. And, it, you know, the last, I think the last few albums of the old lineup were made weren't really very good, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so, and I think... I think Francis in particular decided they needed to, needed to reinvent themselves, so that's why they got me and Jeff, me and Jeff Fritz, the drummer, in. Because I remember like being a fan back back then. I think it was nineteen eighty. Was it nineteen eighty two? The album they released, the White Album. Yeah. And that was supposed to be the last album, wasn't it? I don't know. For my time, you know, what I mean, but they did never too late and all that. And I just don't. I don't. You know, I know those records quite well. I just don't think they were very good. To be. They were, Patchy is the word I'd use. Yeah, I kind of lost... Uh, I mean, mates lost a bit of the love for the quo for a while, actually, to be honest. Then you and joined. I, and I must have when I joined, and I'm sure they hated it. That was it, yeah. <laughs> oh, I've been, I've been, I've been gobbed at, I've had bottles thrown at me. Yeah. I got, I got um, someone threw a petrol can at me in Holland one time, which hit me really hard. And I, Never. I, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. You know, I mean, I'm just doing what I do. If it, and um, That's shocking. If you don't man. like it, then you don't like it. You know, what? it's not my fault. That's absolutely. So I've always looked at it. That's you know, absolutely shocking. That I'm in this band. That's absolutely shocking. I, mean, I never knew that. You see, jeez. Well, oh, God, we... yeah. oh, I've had, you know, I've had loads of insults. You know, real. And there's still a few people around. You know, who um, been moaning about you know the band or the the fact that I, I've ever been in the band. I like, that's fair enough. Oh, man, I, you, don't, I don't care. You've got to love your haters, because I've got plenty of haters myself doing what I do with the music and that. They yeah, come... I mean, I, I have to say, I can't quite see how I fit in on, metal, on a Metal Gods programme, but there you go. <laughs> well, to be fair, I mean, we have UFO on there and that, and... Uh... Helen asked us, and I was like, bloody hell, of course, yeah, big status quo fan. It's actually called the Metal Gods Rock Show, um, and it was my mate's radio show, but like I say, and we're going to be setting up our own online show, but his favourite band is Finn Lizzy, so, you oh, know, right. we're rock, rock and metal, so it's both. Well, so. you know, when I, when I first, well, you, you can read them and read them, that one, because when I first saw Status Quo in 1970... Finn Lizzy with the support band, and that was in my local pub with Eric Bell. You know, it was it was, it was a good night. But there was so, I mean, I don't know how old you are, but there were so many good bands, you know, playing on the road all the time. You know, and I, my, I I'm from Twickenham, and I just used to go and see, I saw Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, Free. That Free was my favourite band. I mean, that's why I'm that's why I'm talking to you now because mm-hmm. I went to see Free at Rich, Richmond Athletic Ground. And I was a guitar player when I went in there. Guitar, I played guitar and violin in the band, and I came out and I left the band. Said, "I need a new band because I'm a bass player now." Mm-hmm. It was a complete epiphany for me. Right. And he's still my, he's still my. But yeah, there were so many amazing bands going around all the time. You know, you got quite blasé about it, really. <laughs> there were probably six venues within half an hour of me. Some, of, you know, two or three of them. Have you heard of Eel Pie Island? Oh, no, I haven't, no. No, we were Pie Island was a real classic place in the, in, in, the, in the 60s, in the British British beat boom and the British movement. It was a walk for me, as was the place where I saw clothes to walk there. So I see you've got a few dates in mainland Europe, and you're playing Paris, where you live for a while. Does it still have a space? Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's all, uh, France is still my favourite country. Right. I think, uh, although it's gone downhill a bit of late, uh, because you, you just... Because uh, they don't seem to be such bon vivers as they were, but I don't know why. I mean, there's just lo- lots of um, there's lots of pizza and kebab and stuff in Hol- in Holland, in France now, and, and I kind of be, I I'm a bit of a traditionalist, me. But yeah, I mean, although the Parisians, I wouldn't call them French, even though I used to live there. Right. You know, most most of the French hate the Parisians because they do they do tend to walk around like they've got a poker up their ass. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. They can be a bit um. Yeah. Horrible. I do know. But they're uh, still brilliant, you know. They're, they're the old enemy, the French, aren't they? Of course they are. Of course they but, are. You know, we, I love, oh no, I mean, I, I love it. I, I, had a, I had an amazing time when I lived over there. I was young, free and single, and it was really quite something. I can imagine. Yeah, I bet the stories oh, you Oh, no, could... you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I bet the stories you could tell could fill a few, a few annuals, eh? <laughs> well, maybe, you know, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't, you know. As, as um... I was talking to Andrew Brown, our keyboard player, one day. I said, "Why don't you, you know, why don't you mem- write your memoirs one day?" So, because well, John, I wouldn't have any friends, <laughs> you know. And I thought, fair enough, you know. That's uh, 
that's a good reason for not writing them. <laughs> yeah, so really it is. But it's the same with Belgium. I mean, I, I adore Belgium, go there quite a lot. Um, the, French or the French or the Flemish bit? We are, I love the French bit. The Flemish bit, no, I'm not so keen. I've got to be careful. Oh, I, like, I like Antwerp. We, we had six weeks there once we quote. Right. Well, we're I, get... I, I liked it there. We're going to be going to a festival over by Antwerp, but we're going to stay in Holland. But um, I prefer the French part, uh, Mons and all of that, that area. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's funny saying because um, we went over there and some other people came over from the UK and they went and ordered McDonald's. And it's like, you eat McDonald's, but you're in Belgium and the food is gorgeous, isn't it? Whereas, you know, in France, it's similar. Oh, yeah. Hey, move, move for it. I mean, can you beat it? I don't think so. Exactly. But they'd rather go to McDonald's there. <laughs> Well, not me, mate. No, no way. You know, McDonald's used to be the the um, McDonald's used to be the sperm of the devil for me because you, when you you know when you go around Europe on a bus and you're sitting upstairs and it's almost like ley lines on a church the way on, on churches the way you can just see the golden arches you know it's almost like as you lose as one comes out of, goes out of our shot another one comes in. I'm not a fan at all. Not a fan. No. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask you a bit of a silly question then. Why has it been such a long time since your debut? Well, I, you know, it's that difficult second album syndrome. No, I just didn't want to do anything that I didn't think was better. And uh, songwriting doesn't come easy for me. Although I, um, and I, I've, uh, contrary to popular opinion, I've written I've, a lot of my best stuff has been written for Quo. Okay. And um, I, these, I mean, these songs have been written on and off, I suppose, over about six years. But I did, I did, I did four or five of them last year, which was a real big. Um, work thing for me and then I, d I just decided that I've been talking about doing it and then I just one day I thought right I'm going to make you know make this happen and it's uh, that it's really weird having to work your album around your kids going back to university but um, that, that's what happened so you know we, that's why we did it just after Christmas because my son yeah, Max the drummer had to go back to Berlin so we just had the time and Mike Paxson luckily was available and Freddie yeah you know everyone made time to do it which was nice um, and I'm absolutely knocked out with what we've done. I really am. I, and, um, you know, I know sometimes people play the game. They have to play the game, you know, I mean, sell something they don't really believe in. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think this is brilliant. I mean, and I, I just want as many people as possible to hear it. If they don't like it, I don't care. Exactly. Exactly. You know, that's, I think if I was bothered about whether people liked, were going to like something I did or not, I probably wouldn't bother do it. I wouldn't bother doing it. You know, because I like you know, like we were talking earlier. You know, I I'm not without my haters, but uh, exactly. luckily I'm not with you know I'm not without my likers. Some of the shows have sold out on the tour in Europe. It's done really well. The hundred clubs sold out in a couple of days. Yeah, you know, and that's um, it's it's going to be it's going to be great. Hopefully, I'm sure. You yeah. know, there's us. We've got a support band in the UK called the Charge. Right. Okay. Who used to be called the Charge of the Marble Light Brigade, but they just think <laughs> it was a bit too silly. Um. <laughs> It's good, you know. It's going to be. Uh, we're we're, we're going to get to rocket. It's going to be a good time had by all. That's my. Uh, that's my wish for. It. I just want everyone to leave with a smile on their face, having had um, a good night. Yeah, you know, having been having been insulted, assaulted, and generally sort of part of that. How would you describe Rhino's revenge sound then? Hooligan rock, isn't it? Well, I think so. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not, it's a bit it's mellowed as I've sort of got older, but it's still pretty. I like to think it's pretty wild. I mean, you've heard, you know, you've heard the two tracks. That there's one called Tomorrow Is Today, and I mean, I think that's quite noisy and, uh, you know, and moody. And we've got, yeah, we've got some, we've got some uh, serious metal kind of tunes on there. We've got Black Widows, Take Them Down. We've got some hip-hop, All The Girls Love A Bastard. Um, it's true. <laughs> oh, I know, yeah. We've got some great part, you know, my name is, I've got Dog, yeah, Secretary, which is, um... If you've ever seen the film Secretary, then you'll know what that's about. Well, I am a sister who raised, I was born to suffer. You like the idea, just the power of that skirt. I like to say she's all tied up and can't get to the phone. On any way, she's using my dick to phone. It's a work, work, my dear. That's my shot, Uber Alice. So why don't you come 
ride on the management ladder. I bet it was, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like it, yeah, they just, you know, yeah. Say no more, I know what you mean. I've, I've, been, I've been happily married, man, I've been married for yeah. 20, God, 29 years this year. Crikey, God. Is I know, it? I'm on tour on my anniversary, which has gone down really well. I bet it, it has. Goes, you know, tour <laughs> in my life, I mean, I've missed so many things from being on tour, weddings, deaths, births. I missed my own daughter being born, which was a... Uh, a real drag. That's a shame. Like, but you're yeah. going to have them on stage with you soon, so you can't complain there. Eh? Absolutely, yeah. You know, I mean, we're, we, I have, I mean, I have done it before, but we've only, we've never really done it seriously. We just, you know, we just got around and played a few pubs and had a laugh. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. this time round, you know, we're actually practicing and, and uh, making sure that it's going to be right, right, kick ass. People like uh, Joe Elliott, for for instance, when he's gone out on the road with his band, I think the Down and Outs, he's not yeah, played he yeah. any Def Leppard. You know, he said, no, don't come expecting to hear any Def Leppard. So, when people go and see Rhino's Revenge... Well, there's to see some Quote songs that I've written, and a couple, and, and some Quote songs that I, that I really like that weren't written by me, but I just think they're amazing songs. And, you know, there's a lot to choose from. I mean, you know, the, the Rossi Young writing team is so, it's so underrated. People don't... Nobody appreciates how easy... How, how, how easy it is, okay, yeah, to write a shit simple song, and how hard it is to write a good one. 
it's a real art form. The, you know, the simple song, and that's what um, uh, a lot of simple songs are really memorable because of their simplicity and their um, the impact that they have. That like kind of leads on to my next question because it must really annoy you when people make such derogatory remarks about crow sound being just three chords. I can think of a few songs that are three chords, but you know, a lot of them aren't. I mean, you know, there you go. There you go. Although I won't be playing this one because this is more like the band sort of calling card. Look at Caroline. You know, what an amazing song. You know, and it's three chords. Absolutely. And then you know, down down. I mean, it's in a way. Well, no, down down is three chords. You know, but it's it's this a lot of attention to detail. But it stays in your mind, doesn't it? Soon you can make you know you can make it interesting. Exactly. As soon as you hear the opening to those songs, you know, don't you? You know. It's exactly. Yeah. You know, that's that for me. That's why that. Um, you know, a rock and over the world, virtually three chords. You know, there's just one, one passing chord. Brilliant. You know, I mean, that's, although the band didn't write that, I mean, you know, what an anthem! How what an anthem that song is. And I mean, I mean, they play, uh, they play, I mean, I think they've played at Liverpool when they win. They play rock and all over the world, you know. And I mean, I've I've had mates ring me up from Wembley, you know, rugby matches and stuff and big big events, and they're playing rock and all over the world. Oh, it's a good story. We were doing um, we did the Montreux Festival a few years ago, and Jen Fogarty was on, and um, our, our PA Liam was watch, watching the monitors when John Fogarty or when we were playing rock and all over the world, and this guy said, um, "Oh yeah, hey, you know, yeah, I, I work for the guy that wrote this song, you know." She said, yeah, and I worked for the band that made him all the money. <laughs> you know, and that was just such a great comeback. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it, you know, as they say, it, this has been very good for us. That's I mean, excellent. <laughs> it's been a you know, Francis, I mean, you know, Francis and Vic have had a long career. I mean, I'm not about eight years behind them. You know, I've been professional virtually all the time since 1975, uh-huh. except when I had a job as a gas cooker, but that's another story. Not a gas fitter, as a gas a cooker. Gas cooker. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, but that's a, another story. Right. <laughs> so that's what I'm going in with, yeah. And it's not, and it's not, and, and it's not, I know that's apparently rhyming saying for a hooker, but it wasn't that either. <laughs> I mean, that's what was, another question I was going to ask you. You've been in the music business a long time. What does keep you going? What keeps you motivated? Being a road dog. <laughs> I am a road dog. I love it. Right. It's, it's I be- love touring, you know. I, I love sit, I, I can sit, I can sit in a bus or in an airport lounge. I mean, I, I am very good at waiting. I think that's that, that's the key to it all. You've got to be you've got to be good at waiting if you like touring because there's, there's a lot of that going on. A lot of waiting to play. I bet. Um, but yeah, I, what's you know what's not to like? I always wanted to be a musician. I've never wanted to be anything else. I, I was a dustman. I wanted to be when I was you know a couple of years ago. Um, <laughs> No, I thought I've never wanted to be, and I've uh, been fortunate enough to be able to make make a really uh, a really good fist of it. Absolutely. And I've got three, and I've got uh, three great kids, and as I said before, I'm still on my first marriage, mm. and uh, which I've I've got a definitely a, a long suffering wife. I mean, living with me is not easy. <laughs> Apart from anything else, I'm incredibly clumsy. Oh, yeah. That's one of the reasons I've got my name Rhino. Right. You know, I mean, I am, but I am a bull in the china shop. That was going to be a question because some might, people might not know why you're called Rhino, and, and is that why you're just clumsy? No, that's not why I'm called Rhino, but I'm not going to tell you. All right, then. Um, is it really? I, I wish I wish it was for the I wish it was for the reasons that you might think, but it isn't. No, it's yeah, it's boring. It's, it's boring, but it's just stuck, and I quite like it. You know, I don't mean I'm not exactly a man of mystery, as you can tell. <laughs> you know, I'm not. You're not getting one word answers from me, are you? <laughs> thank God, I yeah, I've not had many like that. Thankfully, jeez. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, mean, I just uh, I'm really proud of the record I've done. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be. I, I, if I wasn't, I wouldn't be touring it. And also the fact that I'm, you know, doing it with, with my sons. I mean, I, it probably won't happen again because Max is going. Max will be going off to another university, I think. And Freddie's got something else going on that he's. That I think he's going to um, be working. V- very heavily with soon, you know, a complete thing for him. And my, and May, my daughter, she's leaving uni, you know, she want to be going out to work. And, then, and for me, it's back to close. So this is, you know, it's a one-off. Absolutely. You know, so if anybody wants to come and see me do it as a, on a one-off basis, then uh, they, may, they might as well do it this time. 
Hey, what's up, metalheads? This is DJ Chippy from the Metal Gods Rock Show. You are listening to the Metal Meltdown with the legend that is Mr. Sebastian Martino Di Gatto. He rocks. Uh, that's the other reason for having it on DVD, isn't it? Having the show there because it would just always be there for you, you know? It's just. Yeah, well, providing it's good. <laughs> you know, I, can, I mean, there can't be anything worse than doing a shit DVD. <laughs> You know, I mean, well, I suppose there is. There's a lot more things. There's a lot of things worse than doing a shit DVD, but it, it wouldn't help because, as you say, it, it is a re- it is a record of what went on at that time on that night. Absolutely. You know, I know. Fra- I know Francis Rossi doesn't like his one. Does he, he not? He didn't enjoy the experience at all because he, he didn't think they played very well or that he performed that well. It's such his life, you know. That's not. That's not my problem. <laughs> so, talking of Francis and that, uh, is there any chance of them? Francis, Rick, making a guest appearance at any of your uh, shows? Well, apart from absolutely none. <laughs> um, no, Rick's coming, Rick's coming to our London show. Is he? Yeah. Yeah, um, he's going to come to the 100 Club, which is a shame. It's a shame in a way because it's the first one, you know, and then you, after, you know, after you, as from experience, once you've done sort of five or six shows, you tend to iron out the problems and you change, maybe change the material around a little bit until it's working a lot better. After the tour, what's going to be the plans for the rest of two f- 2015? Back to quo, you know. We, we, I mean, the, the, reason, the only reason I'm doing this tour is that Rick is doing gigs in Europe. Mm-hmm. He's pleased doing some orchestral thing Okay. For, for, the, for the month, and it basically means that we're a, um, I'm able to confirm this. I mean, you know, that, that I've, I've thought of doing this before as well, you know, but there's never been a time when I could, I could have said, four months in advance, right, we need to book a tour because I can do it. You know, I mean, we, well, funnily enough, we did a private gig with Quo about two weeks ago that came in at a week's notice. You know, someone asked us to play at their party, which we did. I mean, we don't do it for free. I bet. <laughs> but um, no, someone asked us to play at their private party, so we went along and did that. Yeah, that has, but, so it's nice, in, in that respect, it's nice to be able to commit, although everyone else in the band has gone on holiday. <laughs> I'm a bit of a workaholic, I suppose. So it's a very, you know, it's it's a one-off to be able to do this. Absolutely. And I've got to, I've got to seize it while I can, and I can, and I can't wait, and I can't wait to, I can't wait for people to hear my record. It's John Rhino with us here from Status Quo. I'm talking, I'm talking about Rhino's Revenge here. We're coming on tour to a town near you. Well, let's get to rocking.